Hey there, fellow competitive bowlers. Welcome to BowlScore.com. The purpose of this video series is to describe and demonstrate the BowlScore.com software so you don't have to read the user's manual. Now, I'm warning you now, you may not find these videos interesting unless you own a bowling ball and bowling shoes, bowl in bowling leagues and tournaments, and are a member of the United States Bowling Congress or equivalent. You know what I like? bowling, and the PBA players and announcers. I've been bowling in bowling leagues and watching the PBA since 1979. I've seen the sport and the PBA mature into what it is today, so let's get started. Back around 2010, I'd be sitting in league waiting to throw my shot and I'd say, you know, I could write a bowling application to store bowling data like banks store financial data. By 2013, most everybody had adopted smartphones. So I thought I might as well write some bowling software just as a hobby and see how it worked out. So by February 2014, I deployed it and started using it. In 2016, I moved across the country, set it aside. But now I'm making this video series. To put, I put it up on the internet. It's free to promote using it for competitive bowlers. So to get a good idea of what the software does, we'll do a quick run through of its most basic features. To go to the bowlscore.com cloud, you type in https colon slash slash www.bowlscore.com colon 300. And that takes you to the home page. There are a variety of features on the bowlscore.com cloud homepage that will be covered in later videos. This quick demo is about logging in your competition list, scoring, history, and statistics. So to log in, you push the login button, put in your bowling nickname and password, and you're in and you get to your competition list. At the top are your active competitions. Below that, are your inactive competitions, which are leagues of the past and, and tournaments of the past. To go into a competition, you click it. So here I'm going into my league there. If you click back, you're back to your competition list. Now, when you go into a competition, there's three possible screens that you may see. One is the arrival screen, what we just saw. The next is the scoring screen. And finally, the posting screen. Depending on the state of your game, is the screen that appears. So let's say that I'm going to league and it's Tuesday night and it didn't get canceled by COVID. So here I'm touching the first item in the list. And so now the event date and time is the first field. That should default to the correct date and time. If it's not, it needs to be fixed. The starting lane is the lane that you begin bowling on. So let's say I'm bowling on lane seven. Now in bowling, normally, you always bowl in the next the lane next to you. So in this case, that would be eight. If that's the case, you don't have to fill in the ending lane blank. Only if it's something peculiar, like you're bowling on one lane. Then, for instance, if I was bowling on just on lane seven, I put seven in both blanks because it's going to assume that I'm bowling on lane eight. Now, the position is where you are on the lineup. That's optional. Handicap is a very important field. That is your official handicap for the evening as distributed by your league secretary. It all, okay, below that is paid. You can keep track of the amount you paid. But the important fields that you have to fill in are handicap, and if, you, if it's a scratch league, put in zero, the starting lane, and event date and time. So you click the OK. Oh, I'm sorry. And you can begin scoring. So now there's an option under menu scoring prefs where you can change the number of frames you see and the scaling to make it best fit your device tablet whatever so now i just increase the size of the frame slightly so it's better for this demo so now what you see on the screen for scoring now let's just show that if you hit back 
you're back to your competition list. You touch it and you're now back into scoring, right where you left off. So the screen is formatted as such. First, it's got your bowling nickname, then the what your sh game is, is what's happening as if it was being called by Mr. Schenkel, Mr. Burton, or Mr. Peterson. So in this case, you see waiting for first shot of game. Then you have your toolbar. Then you have the state of your game. You can see here it says lane seven, first shot, a first frame, and first game, the current time. Par is if you got spare strike for the remainder of the game, and max would be if you got strikes for the remainder of the game. Okay, below that you have a traditional score sheet. Then there's the bowl score frame diagram, which we'll discuss as it's filled out. A optional scoring field, which we'll get into later videos for more advanced features. And then there's your rack and your, con your control buttons. So we all know that there's three outcomes to a, to a frame. You either get a strike, a spare, or an open. So let's say we get a strike. You push the mark button. Okay, now let's say we get a spare. I have a 10, I got a 10 pin and I made it. So I hit the zero. And in this case, I'm hitting okay. And then I'm hitting spare. The, now notice that I touched the pin I missed, not the pins I successfully knocked down. You get pun, you need to be punished for missing pins. That's why, and plus there's less of them. That's why you touch the pins you've missed. Okay. Now there's an easier way than what you just saw to score a 10 pin by hit, hitting the 10 pin okay and hitting the spare. And that is to just go 10 pin and hit the mark button. Now the reason you do that is it A, it's easier, but you do not score after your first shot. You concentrate on bowling. Only when you sit down and you're done with your frame do you score score your shots. So now let's let's get an open. I'm going to get a 3-10 split. And then I miss the 10 pin. Okay. So in the bowl score frame diagram below, you can see a green background with an X is a strike. A cyan background is a spare with the pins you missed on the first shot indicated in black. And an open has a gray background, the pins you made on the second shot are black, the pins you missed on the second shot are red and underlined. Now, if you get a double or a triple, the size of the X slightly increases until the third size at which there's no more room. So then, let's finish this game off. Got a 4-7. Picked it up. It left a four pin. That happens. Picked it up. And then once again, left another 10 pin. So now this is the posting screen. After a game is done, you compare the score you've scored to the overhead score. If it's incorrect, that you've scored incorrectly some for some reason, you put the corrected, the actual score in the override blank, which should rarely ever happen. Okay, most leagues today, competitive leagues, have match play. So you indicate whether you won or lost or tied the match by, by changing the match result, and then you're done. You click OK, and you're ready to score another game. So let's say that's what I got. Now, if I remember, if I leave, I get back to here, I can go right back in. And that scoring competition list, and login in a nutshell. Now we'll move on to history and statistics. So here we are back in my competition list. Let's go in to my favorite league of all time until it got canceled by COVID. And so now, when you go into a league, it's going to immediately show the arrival, scoring, or posting screen. And if you want to go to the lesser features, you have to click the menu button. So here we have, in this case, history. This shows me on 310, the last night we had league, my series. I can go to preferences. 
and change it to the first night of league. And then that shows every score sheet for the entire season until it got canceled. Just like that. So just like a bank, you can look up any night, any shot, what you left on your first shot, what you left, if you picked it up, it's a oh, look. I got a 300 and a 734 on 10-1. Isn't that special? Also, we, you can go to statistics. So here's the statistics from the last 310. It has each game and then an overall. Then it has your striking, your sparing, your single pin percentages, your multi pin percentages, which pens you tend to leave, your splits, And you can also say, let's go to the first night in league. Then it will give you your overall for the season and each week. So these are the series. This is your average. This is your standard deviations and, and, and graded by color. You can maybe hopefully use that to improve your game. And that is just the basic features of bowlscore.com. The demo showed features of bowlscore.com that are basically individual based. But one of the things about bowlscore.com, it's not an app running on your phone. It's a server application running on a server in which all your data is shared between each other so that you can indicate your opponent, see your score sheets together, adjusted for handicap, pending marks, so you know exactly who's ahead, just like on TV with the pros at any time. Also, there's brackets, things like that. One of the important features of bowlscore.com is there's two versions. The cloud version, which runs on the internet, and is my version, and the local version, which is the same program, in either Windows or Linux, you can download it, put it on a computer, and then everybody who connects through Wi-Fi at that location can then run their own local bowlscore.com system, could be hundreds of people at a bowling alley, without being connected to the internet or using the bowlscore.com cloud. The next video is how to register with bowlscore.com and get started.